This video is shot at Sutec Business Systems, which provides ICT solutions to corporates, both hardware and software. Click the link on my bio to learn more. Back in 2018, I used to work for a breed training company. We used to go to a lot of education fairs, and as you might guess, a lot of education insurance companies used to come and pitch their products to the parents who would bring their kids. In one such fair, I met an education insurance policy agent who was um, trying to sell me a policy. At the time, I had never even thought of buying one, and so I turned him down. But like they always do, he actually forced me to give him my name, my phone number, and my email address so that he could contact me later when I'm in a financial position to buy the education policy. True to his word, he would call me every three months to check whether I'm in a financial position to sign up for one. And he did that for two years. Eventually, because I always turned him down, he gave up. Or so I thought. What happened is that last year, in 2022, he actually sent me a WhatsApp message. And the WhatsApp message read, Hi Agatha, I'm sure right now you're either married, have a kid, or expecting one. We have a new education <laughs> insurance policy that I would like to introduce to me, to, uh, that I would like to introduce to you. Do let me know when I can call you. I was so offended. I will not even lie. I was so offended. And in my, the first thing I thought was that, is that how you're supposed to pitch a product? Mm -hmm. Is that supposed to be a sales pitch that mm -hmm. actually converts into a client? That is why we are having this conversation today. <laughs> so today, yeah. it, this is actually going to be both a rant <laughs> and a session that will teach you how to actually mm -hmm. plan to actually choose an education uh, plan for your children. Mm -hmm. And who better to take <laughs> us through this session yeah. than Nindo herself, yeah. who is a lifestyle protection specialist. Yes. Marian, thank yes. you for joining us. Thank you, Agatha. Now you can introduce me. yourself. Karibu okay. sana. Asante sana. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Nindo yes. Tairo, and I'm the founder and personal risk specialist at Le Risk Africa, mm -hmm. and I also call myself a lifestyle protection specialist. So what we do, we help families and individuals, even businesses, protect their wealth and their lifestyles because remember life comes in season so we need to make sure that in every stage in life that your wealth and your investments are also protected and we also do have we also have an agency where we do help clients implement these um, the, the advisory tools that we give them through different um, policies yeah Okay, Karibu sana. Asante Agatha. As always, my name yes. is Agatha from the Wealth Tribe and this is where we learn how to build wealth together. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Wealth Wednesdays and if you're new here, welcome to the Wealth Tribe. <laughs> and now Marianne, yes. let's have this conversation. Mm. An education insurance policy mm. is a very common policy yes. among parents, yeah. among aspiring parents, yes. among guardians, yeah. among even people like me yeah. who don't have children but, but I have nephews and nieces. Yes. Like one of the things I dream of is being able to support my nephews and nieces yes. throughout their education. Yes. So even I, yes. without a child, yes. I can actually sign up for an education yes. insurance policy. Yes. It's very common. Yes, it is very common. Let's start with defining what yes. is an education insurance policy. Okay, so... First of all, you are very right, Agatha. When it comes to education, it's a very big aspect, especially when it comes to overall financial planning, mm -hmm. and, and especially family yes. setup. So an education policy is actually an endowment policy. I'm sure you've heard of endowment policies. Yes. So these are life insurance policies with a savings element. Okay. So you can think about it as a protected savings of some sort. Okay. So this policy pays out in the case of maturity. So let's say for example you've picked a specific term, you your kid is going to school in 15 years mm -hmm. and yes if you've survived that term at the 15th year which they call that maturity is when you get paid or the other time there is a payout is in the case maybe there is a death, disability or a critical illness. Yes. So it does give both elements of the savings and the protection. Oh, that's a beautiful yes. way of explaining it. And yes. that's why we, that's why then they yes. always describe education insurance policies as unit linked yeah. in that it has yes. two aspects, yes. the protection and the yes. savings aspect. Yes. yes. Um, would you like to explain more on yes. how people pick up it, what an education yes. plan is? Or okay. What generally is an education plan? Okay, so an education plan is a plan that is around your kid's education. So remember, your kid's education is going to span over a period of time from True. the time your children are born let's just say 
most probably your child will start going to school from the age of three or four mm -hmm. that is like kindergarten mm -hmm. all the way to tertiary so if you're going to have an education plan you have to put into consideration that period of time so what exactly does a good education plan entail mm -hmm. yeah so first of all a good education plan will help you get to your goal or as close to your goal as possible so first of all you have to have the bigger picture what exactly is it that you're trying to achieve very important yeah, yeah have yeah. the end in mind have the end in mind yes. yeah so the other thing is that it's a good education plan has to take care of the what if yeah okay because you know you can put the money aside but what happens in the case now you lose your income mm. you're to die get a disability critical illness because you know life happens as i say life, life happens. comes in the seasons yes but your child still has to go to school True. so a good education plan has to put into consideration the what if mm -hmm. and then another thing which i find very important is flexibility in payments mm -hmm. i want to know that Right now, maybe I can start with 5,000 and then when my uh, financial status improves, mm -hmm. I can also now put in more. Mm -hmm. And then also another thing I want to know, in the case maybe I'm a bit stuck, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that I lose all my money. Yes. Yeah. So flexibility is mm -hmm. very, very important. And mm -hmm. then... Another aspect, Agatha, is it has to be transparent and easy to understand because most policies are very, very complicated. And I think one reason why people get into the fire is because they don't even read the terms and they conditions. Don't understand. They just don't understand. Yeah. You're just told this thing takes care of education and that's it. Yeah. And then maybe a few years down the line, you're like, okay, let me actually check what, do, what I have. And then you're like, oh my God, yeah, this is not what I expected. Yeah. And then it's also important um, in an in education plan, you consider the different milestones. As I said, kindergarten to primary to tertiary, because now there's this short term element with education planning. And then there's the long term, especially when now when it comes to now high school, late mm. high school and tertiary education. You've actually taught me something new yes. because from the people I interact with and even mm. when I think of mm. educating a child, mm -hmm. a lot of people that I've interacted with, yes. they only start thinking about education mm. trans policies when they think of university yes. because they know that the cost, especially the cost of yes. higher education gets yes. expensive by the day. That is I've true. actually never... <laughs> I've, I haven't yes. interacted with a lot of people who yes. think of planning yes. for their child's kindergarten yes. education. Yes. Because most people are like, it's just kindergarten, yes. I can pay cash. Yes. But then when the child is, is nearing the yes. tertiary education, that's when they start thinking exactly. about it. So that, that's yes. a, a very important way to, to, yes. to think about it. Yeah. Now, mm. when you and I are having this conversation, you're always <laughs> talking about the problems families face yes. when uh, planning for education because mm. at the end of the day of course i always say that mm. it, it always starts from a point of love yes where the yeah. parent the parent the yeah. pa somebody who's aspiring yes. to be a parent guardian all yes. all the uncles even yes. because we have to um consider yes. that we live in an african yes, setup it is a family uh, it is it's a community, it's a community thing. thing so we are not it's just true. saying that it's only a parent who can ban educational yes. policy yes so i was saying it always starts from a point of love yes. where i want to help x child right yes. or have to have my child or yeah yes but yes. beyond starting from a point of love, there yes. are problems that we face yes. before when choosing education planning. Yes. Maybe you could take us through that. Okay, so the one thing which is very, very big is lack of knowledge. Yes. When it comes to matters finances, in as much as we can be so good at what we do, we find I think money as a scary topic. Yeah, we That's tiptoe. We tiptoe around money. Yeah. So there's lack of knowledge because even one of the biggest issues that now we're going to even continue and talk about is people confusing investment and insurance. Those are two very different things. So there's the lack of knowledge. Mm. And then one very big problem is lack of discipline. Okay, yeah, true. Fa families or people who want to put money aside for their kids, mm -hmm. one of their greatest fears is lack of discipline because they feel like, okay, I'm putting my money here. If I'm to get an emergency, I'm going to withdraw all the money. So where, where I need a place where I'm going to put my money and not be able to access it. it. Yeah. And then another big problem is people don't start with the end in mind. Very important, yes. yeah. People, so what usually happens is an agent comes and they're like, how much do you have? How much money do you have? How much, you how much you from your paycheck yes. can you afford to give us? Exactly. That's why it starts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To me, that is not education planning. That is more of like sales. Yeah. Like, okay. Um, 
you just tell me what it is that you have. Rather, mm -hmm. this is the bigger picture. This is where I want my children to go to school. This is the cost. This is the time that is going to take till my kids go to school. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, this is the amount of money I'm looking into eventually getting at yes. the end of the day because yeah. I've already factored in inflation because mm -hmm. again that's another problem people don't think about they're like oh my god uh, this money is a lot but when you factor in inflation that's not a lot of money yes yeah? and then rather have that idea in mind and then you're like okay so where can I start yes so yes I'm looking into saving five million in 15 years yes but currently mm -hmm. what I have is 10,000. Yes. So how I can start with that amount of money, but I have that bigger picture and the goal that I want to get to 5 million. Mm -hmm. So I can start with what I have and when my money opens up or I get an, an, another good opportunity, I get a bonus, I can still send money there because I have the bigger picture. Yes. You see. Yeah. Yes. That's true. It's, it's the, <laughs> yes. the first thing that we'd like to recognize yes. uh, to our audience is that yes. we do know that financial planning yeah. is not easy yeah. and, and even when it comes to a parent, yeah. Education planning itself is not easy. Exactly. And so, of course, there are so many problems. That's why we are having this conversation exactly. here to acknowledge that yet it's difficult. But yes. Yes. we are going to set exactly. you out. We are having this conversation so that we can sort you out. Exactly. Now, yes. we, we said that when in education insurance agents approach us, uh, <laughs> the first thing they tell you is how yes. much money do you have? Yes. And then they go back and yes. create Calculate. for you a document yes. <laughs> that makes sure they take as much money from you mm -hmm. as possible mm -hmm. without even caring how many kids do you have, where yeah. do you want to educate your kids yes. what are your goals yes what is your career trajectory yes. and all those things yes but the most the other very important aspect when it comes to both investing and education mm. planning mm. is that most of us make decisions mm. for investing decisions financial mm. planning decisions based on two emotions yes. fear and greed yes now <laughs> If you bring in yes, yes. the aspect of a parent and their child, yes. if you mix fear yes. and greed and then you bring in the perfect picture, concussion. <laughs> it's a perfect concussion of yes. buy anything yes. that will get rid of this mm. fear or buy yeah. anything that will make sure my child gets the yes. best. Yes. But yes. the problem with us making our financial decisions based on fear and greed <laughs> yeah. is that these mm. agents mm. take advantage yeah. of us. Yeah. This is literally the two yes. emotions. Those are the two emotions that they bank yes. on when they are selling us these policies. Yes. Now, let's yes. talk about yes. the <laughs> lies yes. because there are so many. Oh my God. Yes. I myself, in my yes. intro story, yes. Yes. I already <laughs> said the many, many lies that yes. the agents mm. sell us mm. when they are selling us these policies. Yes. yes. So there's so many things because remember, um, when it comes to sales mm -hmm. and in, when it comes to just generally insurance, yeah. yes, it's commission driven. That's true. Yeah. So when it's commission driven, we have to figure out how is it that we can make someone buy. Yeah. Yeah. But then the thing is that just as you said, most people buy based on greed and fear. Mm. But I always believe that. But so that means they're making an emotional decision. Yes. Over something that is extremely long term instead of actually sit down and making a logical decision. Yeah. You understand? So yeah. you're making. You're like, oh my god, actually. Actually now this someone tells you oh um, if you this is an amount of money you could have eaten anyway yeah that's what they tell you yeah but then they're telling you yes. an amount of money you could have eaten anyway mm. and then you close yourself to a contract for the yeah, next 18 years 18 20 and you remember now this is a contract you cannot just come out of a contract just the way you want yeah so that is one of the of the ways that someone can try sell you an, uh, a policy and then there's the aspect of bonuses yes. yeah yeah people love we'll give, that oh word bonuses god, when they yeah. just hear bonuses they're like oh my god i am winning yeah but we have done these calculations and you see sometimes even after including the bonuses still the return is very very low yeah, yeah? Mm. and then also there's the aspect of like tax relief yeah which is true yeah the, like um yes you do get a 15 percent tax relief mm -hmm. which is an advantage but you can get it through an endowment policy education policy or even a life cover by itself yeah and then there's the aspect that the amount the lump sum that you get is tax free mm. but i'm always like okay at what cost at what cost you know? yeah and you can continue i guess that the ones the other ones which you've heard as well yeah so <laughs> i've also had um of agents uh, approaching mm. people and telling mm. them you know the cost of education is going up mm. up by the day, by the mm -hmm. day, right? Mm -hmm. Even if right now you think that it will mm. cost you a million shillings to educate your child, yeah. by the time you get 15 years mm. from now, it will actually be 3 million, yes. for example. That yes. is the truth. Yes, it is true. Yeah, it, yeah. That, that part they are telling yeah. you the truth. But mm. even if the cost of education is going to go up, it doesn't mean that now you yeah. should buy this uh, yeah. policy, yeah. right? We are without now like putting all these other things into consideration. Yes. And then the increasing yes. cost of living. Yes. That's married to the yeah. increasing to the cost increase. of education. Yes. So, of course, 
um, everyday life gets more expensive yes. because of the aspect of inflation. Yes. Yes. And therefore, when you're planning for ed- your child's education, you should factor in that. Mm. And and that's exactly <laughs> why <laughs> you should hire a financial yes. planner yeah. or an insurance agent who, and Spe- maybe yes. an insurance agent who is pro yeah. you, yes. right? Yes. Not pro the company yes. they've been hired to. Yeah. So they can do for you the math yeah. and factor in inflation yes. to make sure that you fully, yeah, you fully yes. protect your child. Yeah, because it's very, very important, as you said, Agatha, mm. because just, we say people People just come and push your product. That's yes. what happens actually yeah. in it's been the sales method for the longest time. For the longest so time. So get yeah. someone who you can sit down and actually have a consultative um, a consultation where someone asks you more about your kids. Because this one one size fits all. I've met people who have terms which don't even make sense. Your kid is then, going to school yeah. in 15 years, you have a 10-year term. Yeah. It's not making sense. So you have to come from a consultative angle mm. where we have a conversation. What are your family dynamics? Okay, wh- how exa- what are your investments, mm. current investments? Mm. Do you have any sort of protection? Mm. Yeah. So that now, even as we're coming up with a plan, we're coming up with a plan from a place of knowledge. Mm. And then this person will work, with, uh, will work with you throughout the whole journey. We're like, okay, so this is the level you're in. My money has opened up. This is now where it is we can put our money this is how we can go about this whole situation what you're saying mm. we have a difference between an mm. agent who sells you a product and disappears yes and moves to another company and exactly. lives their life they yeah. make their commission and disappears <laughs> yes. that type of yes. agent then there's another type of agent who sits with you yeah. understands your family dynamics how many yes. kids you have how many kids you're planning yes. to have and then walks with you throughout exactly. the journey so it means that even five years from now yes. you can call them and tell them hey i just had yes. a new child yes so exactly what do we need to do in order to make sure that the new child is covered yes very exactly. important to do that or they even also check in on you so yes. like even for us what we do mm. every year we do check in on people because dynamics change people get married get divorced yeah people oh, get yeah. kids get other kids yeah so if we also don't constantly check in our cl- on our clients mm-hmm. then um we, there's some aspects that we're going to miss yes yeah and maybe true. now they'll end up being you know underprotected. maybe their investments now like let's say for example they're planning their their education it's low because they've forgotten to add the new kids <laughs> yeah. they've forgotten to change their beneficiaries yeah. so it's very important even like now as you're picking someone who's going to be an advisor mm. a protection advisor or an insurance advisor that you get someone who really actually cares just listen to L- listen to the questions they ask you mm-hmm. and, and check judge. You and judge and also yeah. can they also answer your questions or they're just like constantly pressuring you to buy, 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 buy. Yeah. because most people actually buy because of the agent they just want to get someone off their back yes. then three years down the line you're like oh my god i did not expect this this is not what i wanted yeah so the, it's important to be able to say no yeah. or do a bit more research. Yes. If you're not comfortable, mm. maybe with this one, you can always now interview other agents yeah. to see who you actually go with, yeah, who if you're you, comfortable with. If you ever feel yeah. that somebody is pushing something down your throat, an addiction <laughs> insurance policy, an yeah. investment, take a step back yeah. and right. ask yourself, yeah. why? Yes. Why do I feel this yeah. anxious about this product? Yes. Why am I being pushed? Yeah. You will get your why. Exactly. Yeah. I would like you to talk about mm-hmm. um, this lie that we are sold. <laughs> what will happen to your kids when you die? Mm-hmm. Because, because that's yeah. a very common yeah. one. You're told what will happen to your kids when you die. Yeah. And you know, that is true. Yes. So one of the biggest, uh, one very attractive factor mm-hmm. of education policy, the reason why most people buy yeah. Yeah. is because of the what if yes. scenario yes because we want to know that no matter what happens to us our kids will go to school because again we cannot really control death mm. disability mm. critical illness mm. so there's that aspect where you're like okay um yes i can put money in an investment but that's not enough investments have no protection element money that's true so what exactly can oh. i do to make sure that there's a protection just in case. Mm. So let me give you an example, Agatha, mm. like in mortgages. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm. You take a mortgage maybe for the next 15, 20 years. Yes. So when you get a mortgage from a bank, they say, okay, you can get mortgage protection. So in the case of a death, a disability, critical illness, mm. your people will still be able to get the house. Okay. Yes. So even with education, even as you're planning that investment mm-hmm. or putting aside this amount of money, you can take out a term life policy, which is extremely affordable, mm-hmm. to be able to protect your investment for that period of time. Mm-hmm. So you can be like, okay, I want to get to 
maybe 5 million mm. in the next 15 years. Mm. So you can take out a policy that is going to be protecting that 5 million shillings. So in the case of a death, that 5 million that is going to be paid that will enter into the education port. Okay. So it means even after those 15 years, your child can still go to school. Yeah. So it can also take care in the case of a critical illness or a disability. So everything is just how you choose to plan it. Yeah. Yes. yes. So don't buy yes. into fear. Yeah. There's always a way around, it. Always yeah. a way around it. And well, let's because talk even about education policies have a term life. People are like, oh, you know, I don't want to buy a term life. But it also does include a term life. It's just that now it's all been bundled up together and it's, they don't tell you, oh, there's a term, there's a bit of it that goes to the savings, mm. this part goes to fees. Mm. It's all bundled up together. That you are just told, okay, when you put this amount, because Kenyans want things which are easy, they're like, easy, okay, yeah. I, when I put this money, I'll get one million in 10 years. Yes. In case of I, if I was to pass away, there's this amount of money that's paid to my family. Mm. But you don't sit down to dissect to see if this makes sense. So if you're able to now separate that, it will be the best way forward. And now let's talk about the, the lie, what if you spend the money? <laughs> What if you actually spend the money? You, you, we we yes. mentioned it in the yes. beginning about yes. the people's discipline, yes. but we can talk about yeah. it in relation to yes. education in transport. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, guys, especially when it comes to matters discipline, yeah. Yeah, I always say when, it, when you lack discipline, you're either going to get low returns or absolutely no returns. Mm. Yeah. Choose your battles. Just, just, just choose your battles, <laughs> by yeah. the way. Yeah. Actually, if I was to give credit to it, you, I believe there are some Kenyans, if they did not have education policies, they'll have absolutely no Nothing. money. Yeah. Because uh, lack of discipline is one very, very big factor. I feel like, um, especially if you have a goal and you have money tied to that goal, that should be, you should have discipline enough based on that. Remembering that if you're going to pick money mm -hmm. from that place, you're going to, your child is not going to go to school as expected, or maybe they might have to go to a school you didn't want to take them to, or now you'll have to take a loan to be able to now supplement that. Yeah. So when it comes to now um, the discipline aspect, now it's a mental situation yes. you have to deal with. Yeah. I know, Agatha, you've spoken a lot about this, um, you know, like the mindset aspect. So if you also feel like maybe you need to, you know, um, find a way around it, you know, you can, as you say, standing order, yeah. get an accountability partner. Yeah. Or nowadays, there's also investment plans where you can just tell them, I want to lock it up and they will, you won't have access to yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So literally what you're saying is that don't buy an education yeah. insurance policy because you are sold the fear or mm. if you eat the money. Mm. There are other ways that you can plan for your child's education while also mm. working around that fear. Yes. Number one, you can automate yes. the payments or yes. into that education fund yeah. by having a standing order. Yes. And a standing order is a situation where you tell your bank yeah. to automatically deduct X amount of money that goes towards um, mm. a, a plan yes. or a, another account for yes. your child's education. Yeah. You can also have an accountability system. Exactly. If I'm your friend and yeah. you know that I'm uh, having a child, you can decide that, yeah. listen, I'm supposed to be putting 10,000 shillings yes. per month towards X. Hold yes. me accountable. Yes. So instead of me losing money, yes. so many millions yes. in an education insurance policy, mm. it's best if I have a, yes. a work. There's oh, always yes. a solution, There's basically. A solution. Yeah, that is true. What if you lose your job? <laughs> this, what if you lose your job? That's also another lie. Yes, People yes, have bought yes. these things because what if they lose their so job? So now, if they even lose their job, how will they even start be able to pay the premiums in the first place? It, makes, it, it doesn't, actually it doesn't that even make sense. sense. Yeah. Because yeah. even when it comes to just generally in any sort of planning, when you're planning around losing your job, there's two ways of going about it. There's the income protection in mm -hmm. the case of a redundancy. Yes. So that what happens is when you have an in income protection insurance, mm -hmm. is if you've been, you've been declared redundant, the insurer will pay you an amount of money. Yes like to replace your your salary yes. more or less so yeah. if you had a mortgage they can help you pay yeah. for that mm. mortgage or now in the case now you used to earn maybe like four hundred thousand based on the insurance um, limits you bought they will still be mm. paying you so that you can be able to cater for expenses yes and then another very important one i always say is have an emergency fund because yes. most people buy these education policies without taking into consideration liquidity so you see someone with like five policies mm. with absolutely no I mean liquidity, they don't have even an, uh, an emergency fund in the case of what if, because now with an emergency fund you can include the cost um, within the you know the plan, yes. yeah, your emergency fund. Yeah. So in case you ha you lose your job, that is yeah. it doesn't make so sense. So again, yeah, yeah. that fear of what if you lose a job is not concrete enough yeah, for you to not, take up this policy. Yes. There is always a way to work around yeah. what if you lose a yes. job. Like you said, yeah. you can have an income protection plan. Yes. You can have an emergency fund. In, in, in fact, it's what you can. You mm. should have mm. at the bare minimum a six months emergency fund. 
Bare yes. minimum is six months. Otherwise, you should push it to a year or even more than a year. So that if in case you lost your job tomorrow, yes. you can comfortably live the same lifestyle. Exactly. Keyword here is the same yes. lifestyle while you are shopping for another job. Yes. Then, uh, of course, we talked about bonuses. Yes. People always buy because bonuses tax relief. <laughs> and people love that word. People love that oh, word. They love it. And then now yeah. let's talk about they also told that you'll get payouts before maturity. And then they yes. mentioned millions. <laughs> Talk okay, about yes. that, yeah. So what happens, I think also one of the reasons why most people buy, yeah. like you contribute 5,000 yeah. for 20 years yeah. and then you're going to get, so you, to you in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm only contributing 5,000. 5, 5,000 is little. Yeah. Very little money. Yeah. And then there's this big amount of money I'm getting. That moment, if you calculate, mm -hmm. maybe it's even the exact same or there's just a very small difference in interest yeah. compared to what it is that you've contributed. Because yeah. there's a client of ours who came in because she wanted, she took a policy out, she was told it's a good investment plan mm -hmm. um, now to invest for her kids. So she put in, I think she was putting in 30,000 a month mm -hmm. for I think 16 years. Yeah. So she contributed about 5.7 million. Yeah. But what she got was 5.9. So she only made <laughs> she only made one hundred <laughs> and and eighty thousand. Yeah. Because at that time, you know, when someone's selling, oh just put aside thirty thousand. Yeah. And then they say five million. So it looks like it's such a big amount of money. Yes. And then right now I'm only contributing such a small amount of yes, money. Yeah. Yes. So it's a psychological it's thing. very psychological. So call, always yeah. do your analysis. You might even find you're contributing more than what you're receiving because yes. you've seen such sort we've of seen such stories. Yes. Imagine getting <laughs> less than what you contributed. Yes. Yeah. Basically, that was just pouring money down the drain. Yeah, exactly. And I've also come to realize this yeah. concept of you'll get payouts before maturity. Yes. That is what seals the deal yes. for a lot of people. Yes. When they yeah. hear the word, you'll get Payout. two million. Yes. No, when they hear the word, you'll get yes. two million. You'll get yes. one million. Because for yes. a lot of Kenyans, yeah. the word million yeah, is huge. Is huge, yeah. right? You know, you imagine, like, people yeah. close their eyes and imagine what I could a million yes. shillings on this table. Yes, exactly. So they will not even yeah. do the tax due free kwanza. tax free kwanza. <laughs> wow, ma, ma, ma. You know? <laughs> it, I've, it seems yes. the deal. It's, it's, it's that like that the icing true. on the egg, exactly. the ribbon on the gift. Yes. And then you buy the policy. Yeah, and then the one thing people also forget is a million today is not a million in 20 years. It's no, people oh my don't God. Put into consideration inflation. If I, if I give you a million policy. shillings today, yeah. versus I give you a million shillings in 20 years that maybe might be like 300 k of today's value yeah so even when people say millions have you put into consideration inflation yeah so maybe if you're looking at your children's school fees today mm. maybe that three million is enough yes but if what about now what will that three million be yeah. in the next 18 years and of course this is a problem because People mm. just hear the buzzword. People yeah. just hear yeah. the buzzword a million. And then they don't read the document, the yes. policy document. Actually, that's a, another very big problem. Another very big problem. You'll not read the policy document and therefore you actually do yes. not know what you're getting yourself yes. into. And then I think there's one red flag I think we forgot. Like yeah. one thing people... So if someone sells your policy, mm. like sells you insurance, yeah. and they don't give you your policy document... I have seen it. They do not give you your full. That is a huge red flag. You, because sometimes people pressure you, pressure you. Mm. And one thing people forget is you have a 30 day window period to go through that document. Yeah? Yeah, you have 30 days to go through it because yeah. we call it a cool off period yeah. because maybe you bought it but you didn't really understand. Yeah. And then the one thing they even write in the policy document is whatever the um, whatever is in the policy document supersedes what the agent what told the you. What the agent so told you. So I can come you and write for you like numbers. Yeah, because people are so excited. Come, Someone can tell you, I'm giving you 15% per annum. And then I put for you numbers. Yeah, And then you are so excited. Like, oh my God, this makes sense. So you just trust the agent. Yeah. But now the document... Number one, so number one, it doesn't come in. Or if it comes, you go and put it in a shelf somewhere. Yeah, and forget go. about you it. Even forget about it. Yeah. So that is another very, very big red flag. People now don't not giving you your policy document. Always take it like, um, what do you, you call usually it in say, uh, yeah. like a title deed. It's a title so that, deed, that yeah. is your title deed. That is your. Remember, this agent could move today. They could be in this company X tomorrow. Then company Y. Mm. You are trying to call them. They're like, oh, me, I'm, I no longer work there. Yeah. So always remember this contract is between you and the insurer yeah so take time 
even pay someone to go through that for you. Either mm. it's a lawyer mm. or even for us, we also offer that um, service. service where we go through this document so that we can make sure that whatever it is that you bought is actually matching the goal that you have. Because as I said, sometimes people buy under so much pressure and then you're three years down the line, you've put in so much money. And remember, these things are also depending on your age. You've lost so much time. Mm. And then now you, you want Some to get out. Some of these things out. are irrecoverable. Yeah. Like the amount of years you, you uh, contributed for that thing. Apart from exactly. the money, you can't yeah. go back in time. Exactly. And you know what you're saying is very true. Mm. It's something I've personally experienced. Is it? Yeah. I bought a policy, an endowment policy. <laughs> and they brought me, yeah. yes, they brought me the document yeah. and I signed it. Yeah. But it was not signed by them. Ah, so it's not legally gosh. binding. And do you know, I came to find out yes. two years later. Are you serious? Yeah, two years later, I went through wow. this document. I'm like, like, it's not making sense. This thing is not signed. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, it, yes. I can't even take it yes. to court. Yes. So that's so very always, important. Yeah, we always make sure you go through your document. Yeah, and again, because yeah. we know that, I, I always say that most insurance agents, they're mm. not in the business of helping you understand mm. what you're buying into. Mm. And that is why that document is yeah. full of jargon, yeah. right? So yeah. if you ever read a document and you're like, you mm. cannot understand, yeah. It's better for you to pay somebody yeah. like Marianne here to, yeah. read, to read and interpret for you that document. Yes. To know beforehand yes. what you're getting yes. yourself into. Exactly. Instead of contributing for 18 years and lose millions. Like, yes. honestly, yeah. guys, do mm. the math. Yeah. You pay her, for yeah. example, 10,000 yes. years to go through your document yeah. versus not losing, pay her yeah. and, and lose five million. Yeah, you lose your battle. Yeah. <laughs> Again, yeah. choose your battle. Yes. Now, let's talk about mm. um, in depth now how do yes. education insurances how do education insurance policies in kenya work mm. how do they work yeah. yeah so what happens is remember as i mentioned when in the comes to the definition it's yeah. a combination of like a life cover mm. and a savings so people have to be very clear it's not an investment don't expect this to give you a huge return it's not an investment it's not an investment it's yeah. a savings product it's, it's a savings yeah, product it's a savings product which was essentially created to help people with the discipline mm. and also it's a discipline to, product yeah it's a, di <laughs> uh. it's a discipline product yeah. so within the police i mean within the product itself there is it is partly a life cover because remember it has to take care of the what ifs mm -hmm. because in the case of a death or a disability or critical illness again not all covers have that mm. um so always just check to be on the safe side because some can cover death but not disability and critical illness yeah and then also part of it goes now towards now the investing or the savings aspect yeah so and then part of it goes to fees because remember also mm. we are um an insurance is a business yes so they have to make their money yeah they have to have management fees yeah. yeah yeah so it's just that now sometimes it's not as transparent how much goes to fees, yeah, fees you never know how much goes to the actual savings yeah. and how much goes to the life insurance aspect mm. so just remember it's a combination of all these, all these elements in within one thing mm. yeah because most people say oh i want to buy it because of the convenience aspect but i'm always like always don't let convenience supersede now the actual goal that That's you have beautiful yeah statement. because you yeah. know some people are like oh i just want one thing and i just pay once mm. but again um you forget that when oh, you yeah, get that's what they say. yes yes they're they're like, like, oh, like, yeah. like in Isasa, yeah. um if it's not helping you get to the goal that it is that you want the protection levels are lower and the re return on investment is so low mm. so you have to also now think about that that's why like i always speak about separating yeah yeah cool that's yeah. a very beautiful way of describing it jargon free yes now <laughs> this document that we get mm. when we sign up for insurance mm. policies have different you know yes. columns or, yes. or terms yes. and you'd like to go through a few yes. so that when you, you know, when you get this document you yeah. have an understanding of what exactly are you getting yourself into mm. so what is the grace period so grace period is, um, you know, like you you are you putting aside a premium every month. Yes. Yeah? yeah. And then let's say, for example, you are late in paying the premium. So within that grace, usually like about thirty days. So within that grace period, even if you've not paid the premium mm. and something was to happen, mm. there can be a payout. Okay. So it's a time that they give you like a bit of like about thirty days to now go and find that money and come and put it back in. Okay. So they give you like a bit of a time out mm -hmm. where you're still protected within that grace period, mm -hmm. within that time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time now, like you can go and find the money to come and pay. Yeah. And is this the same, uh, is grace period 
does this period also describe that period of time when you given the documents mm. before you sign them the 30 days time oh, you're no, given that's, uh, no, that's now is a cool of period oh that's so a cool of yeah. period so cool of period rest period is now you've been paying the premiums and then like okay you've not paid the premium on the day okay. you're supposed to pay mm. then they give you like 30 days extra to go and okay. to pay and but you're still in the policy you're okay. still in the policy they, they don't get you they don't kick you out oh yeah. and then cool of period is from the time now you receive your policy document you mm. have 30 days to, to read go yeah. your document yeah. and ask questions mm-hmm. and within that 30 day period mm. so if you have a policy and it's been 30 days with within the 30 days and you're not sure mm. it's good yes to go and get it analyzed or if you read it and you're like oh my god this thing is not what i bought yes yeah, yeah. what the agent told Say you is not what is in the policy document you can actually cancel mm. and they can return your premium maybe less the fee if maybe they, you had to do medicals or something but they can get your premium back so okay. it's like you rather lose that one compared to an accumulated premium yeah, yeah. It's actually your legal right. Yeah, it's your legal right. Yeah. To you can yeah, you can cancel it within the first time. Okay. Minimum sum assured. So the sum assured is now the amount of money that someone gets now in the case of now let's say a debt. Okay. Yeah. So usually now different in, I mean different policies are different. So yes. some people are like, "Oh, okay, your sum assured is a million." So in the case someone was to pass away within that uh, policy period, mm-hmm. like the term maybe it was 15 years, someone was to pass away in like saying year 7, they get us the sum a, a bit of money like which is now the sum of the life insurance mm, element mm, mm. yeah so what usually education folks are like okay we'll give you this amount of money and then even upon maturity what it is that your people would have received mm. they will still receive okay so the sum assured is the amount of money someone will get in the case of the risk actually happening. oh that's yes. a good way to describe yes. the amount of money you get in yes. case of risk x the risk, uh, yes. death so, disability yes, yeah exactly and then maturity is the amount of money that you actually receive at, like, the, at the end if you live through yes if you live through exactly. okay and then a uh, pre- minimum premium or investment yes. amount so that's premium mm-hmm. is now the amount of money that you give to the insurer um in the contract you're like okay i'm i'll be giving you 5000 every month i yeah. um, expect you to give me a million in 10 years yes so premium is that monthly payout or annual depending on what frequency you want you want yeah but that is the amount of money that you g- give to the insurer in exchange now to the benefits that you that you get yeah okay and what if you are unable to pay <laughs> <laughs> which is very very it happens to a lot of people no, in does. fact a majority of people it does. default it does. It because does. one of the things that people forget when they are signing up for mm. these policies mm. is that the job security in this country mm. is a joke mm. right yeah, so you yeah, it could go either way it could go either way somebody yes. can give you a permanent and pensionable job today <laughs> but tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow you're actually not yes. employed yes. so what if i'm unable to pay my premiums oh my goodness okay so what happens uh, different policies are different yes so for some mm. if you maybe past okay we've not gone into surrender value yeah whatever. but so it's pay, actually the next the day next day. Yeah. so let's say for example you've contributed to a policy for three years yes it's it has accumulated some sort of cash value yes right yeah so for some policies um if let's say for example you've been unable to pay hmm. they look at the cash value yeah. is that you have and they take money they take an automatic loan yeah an automatic loan or premium loan so what they means, give you an yeah, automatic yeah, loan they send the document so it's not like um they're coming to ask you so yeah. even, it's been three years yes you've not been able to pay so automatically what is in your cash value maybe you had collected about 200,000 you'll now st- be cutting from that amount of money so the amount of money maybe you get at the end will be less what has been paid yeah. um, as your premium yes and then so it's always important to also ask yourself that question mm. before you get a, po- a life policy because how a life policy has been structured mm-hmm. is you cannot just get out yeah that's why you have to be very very careful when you're coming in mm. because if you're getting a life policy i always say make sure that you have liquidity have an emergency fund yes especially now if you're getting an education post because remember education you're looking into paying the school fees like in 15 years you have to take care of the now what of the happens now. if you have to lose a job now, now. Yeah. exactly so you have to make sure you have that emergency fund and you put you put into consideration the 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 premium right? yeah and then in the case now you cannot pay some people now choose to surrender mm-hmm. so well, now you can tell us what is the surrender value yes. yeah oh surrendering is the most painful thing Part you can go it. through yeah i've, oh I've, I've dealt with clients God. who realized three years later <laughs> yes that even if it's not three years later yes. even five months later even six months later yes. you've contributed almost a million shillings mm. to this thing and then you realize i made a mistake yes. and now you have to pull out yes and you have to lose a large sum yeah, of that yeah. money yeah, because mm-hmm. because the insurer is penalizing you you've come in mm-hmm. you, you signed a you contract you signed that contract <laughs> it's not like anybody forced to yeah. you know it's not like 
gave you like a dragon to yeah. force you to. So you came into this contract and you told the insurer, I'm paying this amount and I'm for 20 years. So this thing is extremely long. Y- yes. This. So if you, because remember, as I said, always remember the insurer is also a business. It's a business, so yeah. most probably the first three years, they've not even made their money. That's yet. true. And also how the like, insurance has been structured, mm. you cannot just come out. Yeah. You have to be able to pay for that pre- period of time. So for education policies or endowment policies, they have what you call a cash value because mm. it has the savings aspect. Mm. Remember, mm-hmm. it's insurance mm. it is the savings aspect. Yes. So after three years for most insurance, but there are others which if the surrender value is for five years. So every yes. policy has its own period of surrender yes, value. Just always, always read. Just always read. So yeah. Always but it's the common one is three years. Three years, so okay. So after, after three years, mm. now you can be like, okay, I do not have money to continue contributing. Yeah. So one way people go about it is like they choose to surrender. Mm. So what that means is like they look at what is the cash value mm-hmm. that they can give you. So it's usually at the discretion of the company. Very important. That statement is very important. It's for at the discretion years. of the company, yes. not you. Not you. Yeah. Because most people are like, oh, but I've put in one million. I'm expecting no. This was not a savings plan. It's yeah. Not a savings account. You yeah. An insurance, and you put you signed up for this contract, mm-hmm. and now you're going to be penalized for leaving early. Why are you leaving? Yeah. So you should have made this decision. Um, the right way from the very from, beginning. Yeah, and that's now yes. this is where I, I usually tell yes. Miriam, I've yes. come to realize that it doesn't end wrong. Yes. It starts yeah. wrong. I love that. You did <laughs> hire somebody. <laughs> you did hire somebody to go through your document yeah. and to give you the right yeah. advice. So 18 years yes. later, you will cry. You'll so it did, did not end wrong. Exactly. It started wrong. If yes. you had just hired someone. Yes. Yeah, so, make, and, so yes, the surrender value now is when you pull out that money. So yeah. You, the money is usually significantly yeah. less than what it is that you put in. If you put in the money, maybe significantly for a longer, less. Yes. Yeah. If, so let's say, for example, you're pulling out the money at year three. Yeah. Say, yeah. You know, as I said, the insurer has not even made a lot of money. Yeah. So you know, even going, don't expect a lot of a money. lot of money. Yeah. And maybe later, the um because remember the the insurer, the what do you call it, the payout or the surrender value increases mm. obviously with time because now mm. they're getting closer to breaking even. It's breaking so even. Yeah, yeah. Is when they can. Yeah. They can give it. Or another thing you can do now is the paid up option. Yeah. So what that means is, okay, still, it, it only uh, comes in if you, your policy has also a certain, has acquired a sort of cash value after three years. Yes. So you can tell the insurer, okay, I'm unable to pay or I don't want to continue paying. Mm. So now give me, based on what I have contributed, give me the new sum assured. Yes. Yeah. Uh. And then I will receive that money after those 15 years. So oh, you don't okay. pull out the money. So sometimes that would be a better option. Yeah. So you'd be like, okay, instead of like losing a lot, mm-hmm. you can just be like, okay, this money is already in. Mm. So I'll just like, bail out mm-hmm. and then instead of you giving me you remember surrender value you get the money yeah. but paid up they just give you now a new sum assured okay yeah but now you lose all the other like n- the life benefits so in the case of a date you know because oh. the only payout would be now at maturity yeah and of course yeah. that money while they sit with it of course is not going to earn yes. anything significant exactly and even if you've lost your job another thing people could also do you could ask the insurer to reduce your premium to the minimum to the minimum that you at least can afford yeah, to yeah. but then uh so the math for the surrender value is this cash value yes. minus the insurance fees yes, whatever it is. yeah they call the side. Yeah. So they'll just tell you this is the amount of money we'll give you there's we, nothing you can do there's nothing you can do yeah. and then of course minus the penalties exactly because they have yeah. to penalize you yeah